A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a relatively new discovery of a very strange galaxy, specifically a radio galaxy, that scientists did not expect to find. A giant radio galaxy that you can kind of see in this image, that seems to produce these enormous radio jets visible from relatively far away, that seem to be at least 30 times as big as the Milky Way galaxy. But more importantly, they seem to have an unusual shape. And so let's actually talk about why this galaxy is kind of mysterious, what kind of a galaxy this is, and what this discovery means for astronomy. But I guess first, let's briefly discuss radio galaxies, because unlike other galaxies we're used to, a lot of extreme radio galaxies are technically a relatively recent discovery. And that's because generally, we define these radio galaxies by their enormous jets. And jets that are basically produced by the central black hole that seems to be still active, or has been active in the last few millions of years. But in every single case, these jets can only be seen in radio light using radio telescopes. Here's actually the famous example of the Centauri A galaxy, here visible in multiple frequencies, but most importantly, radio light. In contrast, here is the same galaxy visible with the Hubble telescope in optical light alone. And so in the last 10 years or so, there's been some major advances in radio telescopes including a major network of telescopes in Australia and another one in South Africa. And as a result, several different radio galaxies have been discovered, with many new discoveries beating old records. Here's actually one of the most iconic images of previously known radio galaxies. This is the one known as Hercules A. And so essentially radio galaxies are defined by these giant jets. Jets extending way past the visible structure and that seem to be produced through what's known as synchrotron process, or essentially acceleration of various charged particles as the result of magnetic fields and very powerful emissions from the central black hole and from the central accretion disk. And so in some sense it's actually kind of similar to a lot of other phenomena such as quasars and blazers. But in case of these radio galaxies, normally the galaxy itself is not particularly special, but the radio jets are super bright and in most cases very large, visible from very far away with radio telescopes. Although intriguingly, so far, in every case, the host galaxy has basically been some kind of an elliptical galaxy and not a spiral galaxy, suggesting that it's basically something to do with the shape and the structure of the galaxy. But to make these enormous jets, the black hole in the middle has to be active for a very long time, mostly because in some cases, these jets actually spread across hundreds of thousands of light years, sometimes even millions of light years. And that means that this black hole has to be active for a much, much longer period of time. And so in the last 10 years, there's been an enormous number of these galaxies discovered, with many of them breaking records one after another. And any radio galaxy whose jets are over 2.3 million light years across are actually considered to be giant radio galaxies. And so approximately three years ago, Researchers discovered this, Alcyonaeus. Here, from tip to tip, this was about 16 million light years across. And back then this was a record holder, and a galaxy whose jets were basically almost impossible to explain. But turns out that this was just the beginning. Because last year we've discussed this, Porphyrian. And here the length is about 23 million light years across, which is obviously even more mysterious, especially because we have no idea how these jets were able to spread for such a long distance and why they still seem to be kind of straight. And well, in the last five years, a lot of different studies reported additional GRGs or giant radio galaxies at various distances away from planet Earth. And though at first they were believed to be kind of rare and basically exceptions to the rule, more and more observations seem to suggest otherwise. They actually seem to be kind of common. Interestingly, if we go back to Centauri A, scientists now believe that it may represent an extremely young version of these galaxies when the emissions just start. So basically, in like a billion years from now, this might be also some kind of a giant radio galaxy. And because this is our neighbor, only a few million light years away from us, there's obviously a lot to learn here. And that's because we actually don't really understand how these jets work, or at least how they propagate through space, and why in some cases they get certain shapes. And now we get even more mysteries. A study by Charlton and a team that was using South Africa's Meerkat telescope was able to discover three giant radio galaxies in a relatively small patch of night skies. And this by itself was already quite intriguing. It basically suggested that these galaxies are super common because here, in just a small space, they were able to find three. 
but one of them was a little bit strange. So this galaxy, that's approximately 3.3 million light years across, has now been nicknamed Inca Thazo, which is a South African Zulu language with the word meaning trouble. And that's because right now there is a bit of a trouble trying to understand what's going on here and how this galaxy is even possible in this location or why its jets are so strange. And so this newly discovered radio galaxy seems to have very unusual characteristics compared to its siblings, with the strangest characteristics being the shape of the jets. Instead of being relatively straight, like in a lot of previous examples, here we get something that's curved and that seems to bend in two opposite directions away from the galaxy. And this sort of challenges some of the modern models when it comes to the propagation of plasma away from central black holes. And that's because in previous models, it was always suggested to be in a straight direction following magnetic lines. But it looks like in these extreme galaxies, things seem to be just a little bit different. It basically suggests that some of the electrons that were moving away from this black hole very likely got boosted by something else and seem to have shifted directions millions of years after they left the galaxy. And right now the only explanation is that they must have collided with something on the way, possibly some kind of a really hot plasma cloud that was possibly present in this location. With the other major mystery being where this galaxy is located. So the thing is, all of the other radio galaxies we've found so far, especially the ones with giant jets, are usually completely by themselves. They're not part of galactic clusters, they don't have a lot of large partners or large neighbors, which is why their jets can be so long and can basically move away from the black hole completely undisturbed. But in the case of this new galaxy, it actually seems to be right in the middle of a galactic cluster and is possibly one of the brightest and one of the main members. And finding a radio galaxy with such large jets right in the center of a galactic cluster has never been done before. It basically creates a new mystery. A mystery of why we're not seeing these more often and what role its neighbors that's located in this cluster plays on the formation and the evolution of these extremely giant jets and vice versa. How these jets potentially evolve nearby galaxies, either suppressing them or helping them form new stars. And that's because these jets obviously contain huge amounts of gas and a lot of plasma that very likely influences nearby galaxies. And so even though this is not the largest radio galaxy discovered, this is definitely one of the most mysterious and the one raising the most questions. With obviously the biggest question being, why do these jets even exist? A lot of these giant galactic clusters very often contain huge amounts of gas between galaxies, so it should actually be super difficult for various plasma jets to grow and to propagate anywhere. Which is why we've never seen anything like this before in any of the previous galactic clusters. And so the nickname Encathazo definitely fits this galaxy pretty well. It is causing a bit of a trouble for astronomy. But as mentioned previously, this is also a pretty exciting discovery because technically this confirms these giant radio galaxies are not as rare as we initially thought. These three radio galaxies were discovered in a survey known as Cosmos, which is a relatively small patch of night skies that you see right here. And so the Meerkat radio telescope discovered these three galaxies in a relatively small part of this cosmic survey, implying that many more are probably hiding somewhere here as well and suggesting that giant radio galaxies exist everywhere. We just haven't discovered that many yet. And these are actually the first giant radio galaxies discovered in the southern hemisphere. All of the previous discoveries were from the northern hemisphere, and so it's quite likely that we're going to be seeing more and more as Meerkat and the Australian ASCAP conduct more surveys and conduct more observations. But more importantly, in 2027 we're going to have the Square Kilometer Array that's going to transform radio astronomy in ways that we cannot even imagine. That's going to be able to see so much more. And so chances are that in the next five years, not only will we have even more discoveries of different enormous radio galaxies, we'll also most likely have some solutions and some explanations for how they form these jets and for how these galaxies and their jets grow so large. And so until future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by doing a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.